awkward. Right, so, do you think that the action New Zealand's government is currently taking on climate change is sufficient and does justice to our future generations? If not, what goals and actions would you push for in the next term if elected? I think the, uh, the emissions trading scheme that was introduced by the Labour government has been significantly watered down by the national government. Uh, I think in its original form it was a good start, but certainly it needs to be strengthened uh, and, and the Labour government has made a commitment to um, bring forward some of those uh, targets particularly in the, in the emissions area uh, relating to uh, greenhouse gases. Um, those things will be included from 2013 um, rather than being put back as they are under the national government. So the Labour government is committed to a strong ETS scheme uh, and is making moves to, to strengthen that. In your opinion, is the ETS in its current form an equitable system that delivers sufficient economic signals to emitters, what changes would you advocate to make it more effective, if any? So that's well, again, I think the, 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 the challenge for us is that at present a lot of the burden is loaded onto taxpayers. Um, and again, by, by bringing those emitters into the scheme earlier, um, there are significant incentives for them to change behaviours and to look at alternatives for, for the way that they are um, acting on the environment and, and those advances in timing uh, can only be good for, for the country as a whole. Cool. What are your opinions on the expansion of the fossil fuel industries uh, such as coal and lignite mining and oil and gas exploration in New Zealand and do you personally support the call for a 10 year moratorium on new coal and lignite developments? Uh, personally I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, things like deep sea drilling. I, I think given the events of, of the past month we need to be very very careful and have the strictest guidelines, the strictest, the most capable ways of, of dealing with, with um, accidents if they happen and, and personally I would not support deep sea drilling until we had a, a proper framework in place for dealing with, with any adversity that, that comes up as a result of that. In terms of lignite um, I personally think that it's a it's, it's a dirty fuel, um, and the Labour Party does support the 10-year moratorium on new developments in, in terms of lignite. Um, so our, our position on those is quite clear. Um, in terms of, of uh, deep sea drilling, um, there will be the strictest guidelines around any exploration that occurs. Um, and in terms of lignite, we, we, we do support the, the 10 year moratorium, no question about that. What do you see as the main future sources of energy for electricity, transport and heating for New Zealand? And do you support the call for the government to create an action plan to attain 100% renewable energy before 2050? Um, the Labour conservation policy which was released last week sets a target of 90% renewable energy, uh, renewably generated electricity by 2025. So we are looking at putting in realistic targets for, for the country's electricity generation. I also believe that we're, we're a smart country and there are plenty of alternatives out there um, in, in terms of our reliance on fossil fuels. And what we need to do is encourage people firstly to, to research and development in those areas, and also, you know, put some incentives in place for for um, people to say this actually is an economically viable alternative. Uh, we need to, to follow this path rather than continue on a on a path to nowhere, which is which is our dependence on, on fossil fuels. Um, so, personally, I don't know what the answer is going to be in in 2030, 2040, but I do know that there is plenty of potential here. We're, we're a smart country, we rely on our clean green image uh, and there are going to be alternatives which we should pursue with, with all vigour. Do you think the government should be doing more to promote research, development and deployment of low carbon and more sustainable technologies and practices in New Zealand and if so, what? 
Absolutely. You know, one of the first things that the national government did was remove the, the tax credit for research and development. Um, that, that is incredibly short-sighted. Uh, the Labor government will make a commitment to reintroducing that research and development credit only by encouraging new innovative in industries can we possibly solve the, 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 the problems around uh, energy use and reliance on, on those sorts of things. So certainly you know, we've made a demonstrable commitment to doing that um, and I believe that that's the right way to go. Research and development, getting the, the best and the brightest young minds onto the, the issues that we face, that's the way of the future for us. Do you perceive New Zealand's dependence on oil as a risk to our economy in the age of high and increasing oil prices? Do you support the reallocation of spending on new roads towards low carbon and public transport initiatives? Absolutely. Again, we've made a clear commitment to uh, taking the funding for um, the, the highways that are, are proposed to go north of Auckland and taking that and saying we want to put this money into providing um, support for a good rail network for Auckland um, to solve you know, the commuting problems but also to solve the, the problems of increased you know, greenhouse emissions. Transport is one of the, the, the key um, factors where that, that contribute to, to, to global emissions and we have to look at alternatives whereby we say we're not going to spend money on, on you know, roads that, that provide little benefit to their communities but that funding is much better placed into things like sustainable um, rail networks, those sorts of things. And, and I think that that works in Auckland, it can work in every city. I, I mean here in Christchurch we have an ideal opportunity through adversity to say, okay, how do we want our, our future infrastructure to look? What sort of ways can we improve our, our carbon footprint? Um, what opportunities do we have to, to rebuild our infrastructure and take into account those sorts of issues um, that we need to be looking at in the future. Uh, what actions, if any, would you take in your electric to enable your community to increase their understanding of climate change and to reduce their emissions and dependence on oil? Well, I, I, again, that, that follows on from the last question. I, I mean, we have, since the events of last year, we, we have terrible traffic problems here in the Isle of Electra. Um, I, I really see that there, through adversity, there is now an opportunity for us to say, what kind of shape do we want this electorate and this city to take in terms of public transport, in terms of increased cycleways, um, in terms of connecting the hubs, such as the University of Canterbury um, and, and the various other institutions and areas around the electorate, how do we solve the problem without just putting more cars on the road? You know, we, there are a number of options on the table and, and I think that certainly the Labour Party uh, is keen to encourage people to get their ideas out there um, and to look at sustainable ways of, of solving our, our transport um, issues here in, here in Christchurch. And finally, how can young New Zealanders convince the government to take stronger action on climate change? I think the, um, the, the best way to get the message across is really through conversation. Now, I, I, I used to live in Australia and we had been through a, a severe decade-long drought. We were under pretty stern water restrictions uh, and I went into a school and I was talking to some young people and one of them said something just in conversation that has stuck with me and, and really summed up the, the, the whole issue for me and, and they said in a hundred years people will look back at us and they'll be amazed that we bathed, washed our cars, washed our laundry in pure drinking water. And I thought, what an amazing concept is that? I had never thought of it that way, but it's only through talking to, to kids and, and to young people that you get these different perspectives. And I think that's, that's how you change people's attitudes. That's how we get the topics on the agenda. It, it's only really through conversations and through making that the point uh, that 
governments will take notice and will take action. So I would encourage everybody to keep the conversation going. That's the most important thing that, that can happen. Cool. All right, thanks for speaking with us. No worries. Good luck. <laughs>